The plains of Africa are home to a lot of pretty strange looking animals. I mean, have you really thought about how weird a giraffe is? But one chimeric beast would definitely leave you scratching your head if it came across your path. Is it a pig? Is it a rabbit? Is it an armadillo? Why is it the size of a Doberman? An animal with a name many of us have learned to spell thanks to a certain BBS show, the aardvark is equipped with the tools, know-how, and chutzpah to practice actual earthbending here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I am Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, Richard Kaspar, Lottie Aubrey, and a brand new patron, Gray Hughes, thank you so much for your support. What? It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. We have a new patron. We do. Oh, blessed day. Yeah, he just heard us. If he if he was uh, listening to the Patreon only episodes, he was just listening to us talk about uh, the Sandlot and Madman and Breaking Bad for a while. So, wow, enjoy that. And he liked one of our posts. He, he was in the lounge. Ah, he made the jump. To light speed. Well done. Yes. Yeah, the right coordinates. Well done, Gray Hughes. Well done. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okie dokie. Uh, and today we're talking about an animal that is perpetually in the third grade, but less on that later. Yeah, less on that. Actually, a little bit more on that later. I, so... <laughs> now that you like if you look up this animal which what are we talking about by the yeah. way we're talking about the aardvark yeah so arthur is an aardvark but i've never seen an animal look less a, a cartoon version of an animal look less like the actual animal than arthur does because, like, the ears... He looks like a bear. The no He looks like a teddy bear, is what he looks like. The ears, the nose, no nothing. Like, Francine looks way more like a... what? A, she's a monkey. Um, Binky looks way more Francine. like a bull, bulldog. Buster looks way more like a, a rabbit. Like, it's very clear what animals these are supposed to be. Arthur is a teddy bear. He is not an aardvark. A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. Do you remember that rap? Did you watch that episode? I don't think so. I watched the... Is that the one, same episode as Jekyll, Jekyll, Hyde? I don't think so. It's a, it's a spelling bee, and Arthur has to learn how to spell aardvark. And uh, he's like... They put it to a rap, and he's like in his treehouse going, A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. And I did that was seared into my memory, so I've always known how to spell aardvark from that day forward. I only remember Jekyll, Jekyll, Hyde. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, Buster going away. Arthur punching his sister. And the time Arthur almost kills his dog with Halloween candy. <laughs> you didn't see the one where Nate... Where, uh, DW thought that her ears were going to turn green if she got ear piercings. Oh, I do remember that. I also remember she thought she Arthur. was she thought she was going to die because she ate a green chip. Also, oh yeah, and, green stuff happens to her. And she she and uh, the and the big bully Binky have like a moment <laughs> where they both think that they're going to die or something because I think he ate the green chip too, and they're just sitting on the swings just. Like okay, I guess we're gonna enjoy life until until <laughs> we pass. I don't. Rem I gotta watch that episode because it's been forever. I can't. I can't imagine that this kids PBS show. The premise of that episode is that they think they're going to die because they ate 
like death is on the table. It just seems like such a weird thing for this for a PBS show to be or a PBS kids show to cover. They, there's like a lot of like funny stuff. Like if you wa- just watch like clips of Arthur on YouTube, and there's some intense stuff. Arthur out also of Arthur and um, Alan the Brain Powers look. Almost identical, and he's a bear, and Arthur's a v- aardvark, so. Yeah, I can't judge a, a cartoon animal by its cover. But we're going to call it, so the, it's called the aardvark. Um, the, we're going to call it here the nose nose, the a aardvark, and the curse of the pig rabbit. Nice. Well, if Wallace and Gromit and the curse of the pig rabbit. Yeah, and that will become apparent when we talk about what it looks like. Okie dokie. Do you have any um, games we could play? Or we should know. No. Not yet. Wait a minute. We're missing the... What uh, the, the, is this? Why, what we're here for. What could it possibly be? What is the therefore therefore? What, is, what could it be, this animal that I did see? <laughs> Can you help me guess this mystery? Okay, let's talk about... The taxonomy. They're in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom, Animalia. They're in the phylum Chordata. They're in the class Mammalia. They're in the order Tubulidentata. Nice. The family is Ori... Oh. <laughs> Orinctoropodidae. Orectoroptidae? Or, or no wait, Orectoropodidae. There we go. Or yeah, or Richteropta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the genus, Orictoropus. Yeah. And the species, the binomial name, Orictoropus, Afer or Afer, or old Gaffer, Sam's dad, Samwise Gamgee's dad. I never knew if that was his dad or like someone who took him in. I think it's his dad. Or his dad. uncle or something. Yeah. That, everyone's got to be an orphan in this one. Um, all right, yeah. Oric, uh, Terapus? Uh, Affer, or Offer. Maybe Offer. Uh, since we're in the business of naming things, though, it's time for my favorite part of the show. Critter Groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. And that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of entry, or what is the collective noun? If you saw a group of aardvarks, if you were blessed enough to see a group of aardvarks, because it's not common for them to hang out together, um, would you say it's A, an armory of aardvarks, B, a bailey of aardvarks, C, a castle of aardvarks, noticing a trend, or D, a dungeon of aardvarks? Uh, what were the first two? Armory and Bailey. A, B, C, D. Armory, Bailey, castle, and dungeon. What's a Bailey? Uh, it is a part of a castle. Well, guess what? Bailey of Aardvarks. Final answer. Uh, that is incorrect. The answer is Armory. It is an Armory of think? Aardvarks. The Bailey... Not armored. Most, um... The, the like very rudimentary castles were called Mott and Bailey castles. The Mott being the hill where the uh, the 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 fort stood, and the Bailey being the in the the walled part below it where the houses were. Is that kind of like what uh, Rohan is? Or, or Edoras? No, yes. Rohan. Yeah, Edoras. Yeah. So any, any anything within the walls that's not on the hill is is part of the bailey, and then the mott is in the middle. Um, but yeah, it's an armory of aardvarks, and an armory doesn't necessarily have armor in it, but it does have yeah. weapons. True. And ar- the aardvark has weapons. Gun. It has gun. It has gun. <laughs> <laughs> It, collectively, uh, they have one. One twenty-one guns. Uh, the, uh, would you like to know what it looks like? Yes, very much so. I, I imagine it looks like a bear. 
based on my experience with exactly, aardvarks. Yeah. Uh, actually, the aardvark looks sort of like a dex build armadillo. <laughs> uh, it looks almost like exactly like an armadillo, little bit no armor, just fleshy little, like hairless cat skin. It does a lot of like dodging and rolling rather than just tanking hits. Yeah. They have large bunny ears and a long piggish snout. You'll notice Arthur has neither of those things. <laughs> yes. And they are the defining features. <laughs> if they couldn't oh, give him bunny ears. He'd look too much like his best friend Buster. And you couldn't give him a, a piggish snout because then he'd look dumb. Because then he'd look horrifying and no one would like him. <laughs> it probably like it probably tested just so poorly when they made an anatomically correct aardvark. <laughs> just make him a bear. Uh, their backs are rounded like an animated, <laughs> like an intimidated cat. <laughs> uh, an animated intimidated cat, you could even say. Arvark feet are tipped with something between a pig hoof and claws, allowing it to switch between the digitigrade and plantigrade positions. Mm. Do you remember what those words mean? Yeah, it has to do with what part of the foot touches the ground. Yeah, digitigrade is when your toes touch the ground, and plantigrade is when your whole foot touches the ground like a bear or a person. And digitigrade is like a dog or a horse yeah. or just their toe. If you're a badger, your back feet are plantigrade and your front feet are digitigrade, I think it is. But in the armadillo's case, you can switch between the two. When you're squatting, you're plantigrade. Mm -hmm. Or and when you're running around, you're digitigrade. Ballerina dancing. Yeah. Uh, there, you got to look at their like feet because they are like if if you, if you had like gun to your head, is that a hoof or a claw? You'd be like, uh, uh, you'd be sweating. Because they, it looks like it's both. I'd say it's a claw. It's yeah, it's more claw, but then like the way they stand on them is very hoof. Like it looks like pig hoofs almost. Yeah, but the fact that like there's individual. Uh, I mean, look at a pig's hoof. There's plated fingers. Thingies. Yeah, but there's like it's cloven, so there's just two of them, right? This has like the full. Uh, I just saw one in Publix. An aardvark? Or pig hoof? <laughs> a pig feet. Pig's feet. I you, I mean, I. Yeah, there's like two and then there's a third one up a little higher, similar to the aardvark. The ar it's aardvark looks so of. weird. Like you, if, if you get the chance. Listener, look it up. You, if you've been thinking that aardvarks look like Arthur uh, this whole time, then you're going to prepare to be surprised by this actual pig rabbit. <laughs> this, um, this is yeah. It's this lives in Zabu land. It does. Let's talk about his relative size so welcome to the blood measure up segment the official listeners favorite part of the show the part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in audio of yourself saying singing or if time permits oinking grunting whatever an aardvark does the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com we don't have a new measure up intro this week which means we get to hear from an aardvark and carlos will like already knows who it's gonna be <laughs> I don't remember what he sounds like. Up. It has been a long time. So, well, he sounds like like fourteen different children. So, like he's legion. <laughs> he's yeah, because he's inhabited like by the ghosts he's, of four of thirteen he's other children. By most of those characters are voiced by real kids, so they they grow up, and the show's been going for like twenty, thirty years. Oh uh, yeah, I guess. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Traveling to foreign countries with your dad. I wish I could get DW to go to a foreign country. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> 
a uh, lot of the show is DW and Arthur just roasting each other. <laughs> That's why Bibby was never allowed to watch it because uh, they were not very good siblings to each other. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, put a hyperlink to that video and it is Arthur being iconic for four straight minutes. And it's just a bunch of funny stuff from Arthur. <laughs> Arthur out of context is good. Uh, let's get into the weight. They're between 60 and 80 kilograms or 130 to 180 pounds. Way bigger than I thought. Yeah, that is a big boy. That's a... So how many... That's like a great Dane. That's, that's a big dog, yeah. These these guys are chunky I mean, though, like they. they I want to see one next to a man, a full grown man. Knock you over. If it gets the zoomies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my my dog has the gets the zoomies, and he's sixty pounds, and he can. I mean, if get, given the right position, he could definitely knock me over. He knocks the kids over all the time. Uh, yeah, like it almost comes up to hip height. The giant, it's like similar in size comparison to the giant anteater. Giant anteater has like a lot of fluff on it. This one's just like a naked anteater pig. What the heck? How is he so big? Yeah, there's a picture of a a woman kneeling next to one and it is uh, right at face level with her. Uh, So yeah, they're, they're 180 pounds, like a big dog. So how many aardvarks go into the total weight of whiskey produced by Ardbeg Distillery? Ardbeg. Ardbeg. Here's a hint. Ardbeg is a distillery in the Isle of Islay. Or I don't know how you say that. I guess it's in the Isle. The, Wikipedia said it, it is in the Isle of Islay, Argyle, and Butte, which is in Scotland. Are those three different islands? Are they one island that has three different municipalities? How is the distillery in all three of them? Is it just a campus that spans all three of them? I don't know, is it, but it's in three places. Is it a little bit of Turks, a little bit of Caicos? Yeah, uh, which means, if since it's in Scotland, that means they produce Scotch whiskey with no E. They used mal- They used malted barley which is barley that was allowed to partially germinate in water before being air dried, which I didn't know that's what malt was. I know what malted milk balls taste like. Yeah. I think those are completely unrelated to (laughs) malted beverages. Probably malt liquor. This, the, the, the sound of it, sounds tastier than normal because of yeah. what I understand about malted milk balls. And now what is malted like a malt milkshake? Yeah. We have to do some malt research, I think. Cuz yeah. now I'm really hungry for some sweets. Speaking of hungry, the gaffer's real name is Hamfast Gamgee. <laughs> <laughs> The Adventures of Samwise and Hamfast. <laughs> uh, thought, thought real long and hard about that name. Um, okay, so it's the total amount of whiskey produced by this uh, island with an identity crisis. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, not the islands. Ardbeg, the distillery. Oh, the single distillery. In one year. Mm-hmm. In pounds? Kilograms. Or pounds, yeah. Okay. Goodness. Uh, I have no idea. Even, even if it was in liters, that. I would be able, wouldn't know the answer, but <laughs> I don't yeah, I, I had to calc I had to estimate the weight of a liter of whiskey. And I might, the, what I saw might have been a, bo- a liter bottle. So I don't know if the weight included the bottle. So this, 
estimation might be a little off. I'm going to go with, I mean, it's just a small, nah, we're going to go with 25,000 pounds. So the, the answer is 138 aardvarks worth of whiskey comes out of ard distillery. Final answer. Our distillery. Uh, yes. The correct answer is 16,275 aardvarks. Oh, boy. They do a lot more business than I thought. They produce roughly 1 million, 1.3 million kilograms of scotch. Goodness. Is that where all the scotch in the world comes from? <laughs> People drink a lot more Probably than I not. thought. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess that's later. probably not even enough to uh, satisfy the entire island of Scotland, <laughs> or the the I'm entire. I'm a little worried that all those glass bottles are included in those kilograms, that, but that's we'll possible. Just move on. Uh, let's talk length: 105 to 130 centimeters, or 3.4. To sit four point two feet, a four foot vark. How many of the heaviest cucumber would go into the weight? Oh, uh, the, how many of the longest cucumber would go into the length of an aardvark? Ah, uh, much better. Two. And I've, you don't even get to give a hint. Two. I already got it. The hint, <laughs> oh, thanks for mentioning it. The hint is that the cucumber uh, amateur gardener, Sebastian Suskin of Southampton, UK, uh, produced this cucumber, and he was hospitalized for a week with a leaking blood vessel in the brain at a crucial point in the cucumber's growth, but recovered in time to claim the title. The, his victory was won not f without a tough fight. Yeah, this cucumber cost him a lot. Like maybe he was really stressing about it. In the in the beginning of the Curse of the Were Rabbit, everyone it, it's it, it takes place in the in the UK, and all these people care about nothing more than their giant vegetables. So this <laughs> really it really fits. It was in the UK. So I'm going to say two. I'm going to say this is like a a little over two feet long. I'm pro It doesn't sound like a lot. But yeah, I'll go with it. It's either two or one. South, or somewhere between there. Southampton is actually Southampton. Southampton. South Southampton. It's like Southampton. <laughs> it's like the Thames or Greenwich. It's like who's who who was responsible for the spelling of these things? Uh, did you give me a final answer? Yeah, two. Maybe two. Correct answer is one point one four. Ah, that is not. The cucumber was one hundred and thirteen centimeters or three feet. Uh, and eight inches. My gut told me that two feet was a little too uh, short for that, but I thought four feet was a little ridiculous. So, but it was closer to four feet than two feet. I think it was grown in a tube so that it would be longer. That sounds like cheating. Apparently not. All you need at the end is a cucumber with length. So, don't we all? <laughs> uh, would you like to hear some fast facts before we get into the major fact? Show, show. Aardvarks live in s the southern half of Africa, which it it was described as the bottom two thirds of Africa. Doesn't that mean sub-Saharan Africa? Yeah, I don't, that's an odd way to put it. I would. Can't we just say that? Maybe <laughs> Sub-Saharan Africa is a different, like that is a, is a specific different region that doesn't encompass everything south of the Sahara. 
but <laughs> oh, you're saying like maybe it's describing just what is right under the Sahara? Yeah, maybe it's like from the the bottom po- portion of the Sahara like to the Kalahari or something like that. That makes sense. So uh, they prefer areas with soft soil and no rocky terrain. They eat plants and termites, but they will also eat aardvark cucumbers. You don't say. Uh, yeah. Aardvark cucumbers are hard to find a picture of. I can only find drawings, which is not much more better than an actual cucumber. Um, but these cucumbers uh, depend on aardvarks for seed dispersal. They have a close relationship. Aardvarks are nocturnal and solitary. So they are... They're vampires. They're brooding. They're Batman. They look just Aardvarks like Batman, are Batman. too. Uh, and they walk around hunting for bugs in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm not saying aardvarks aren't Batman, but have you ever seen an aardvark and Batman in the same room? Never in my life. Okay. And now we know that aardvarks are big enough to be Batman. <laughs> it's four foot, 180 pound Batman. <laughs> He's just a baby. <laughs> This is a really dense baby. <laughs> they, they are dense. Four foot, 180 pounds. Anyway, their large ears help them avoid predators like lions, hyenas, dogs, and leopards, and sometimes pythons. When they detect danger, they get out of dodge. They prefer not to fight. Um, and we'll talk about how they get out of danger using their claws. But when their long hooved claws can't get them out of danger by the vamoosing, they may be used for stabbing. They will roll onto their backs in the jujitsu position and rake at per- predators with their claws. That's they're an armory. They're a walking armory. Yeah, they 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 go into the jujitsu def- defense, which is like whenever you see somebody do that in jujitsu, it looks stupid and it is dangerous. If they're good at it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's being in guard. Yeah. But you look like a dead bug. Yeah, until that dead bug breaks your arm. <laughs> or yeah, knocks yeah, yeah. you don't, out. Just just don't go down onto the dead bug. Yeah. <laughs> good call. Also, Sub Saharan Africa is exactly what you think it is. <laughs> it is everything south of the Sahara all the way to South Africa uh, may or may not include Sudan. Okay. So we wanted to make sure that maybe aardvarks could be in Sudan. Yeah. They, but not without a visa. True. That's all I got for that. Do you have any big facts? I sure do. This one's called dig Doug. Uh, so the art aardv- different childhood character. Yeah, it's, we're just full of nostalgia here. Um, since the aardvark eats exclusively underground critters, ants and termites, uh, and it sets up its home underground to avoid predators, as well as the hot African sun, it should be no surprise that the aardvark is pretty good at digging. Plus, it's got those uh, hoof claws. Their burrows are extensive tunnels <laughs> that can reach up to 10 feet below the ground. So... Uh, not that the tur- the tunnels are 10 feet long. They're much longer than that. Um, but they the max depth can be up to 10 feet below the surface of the ground. So um, they also use their exceptional noses and hearing to hunt for termite nests as they forage. Uh, they don't have great eyesight. They are colorblind. Um, so they depend on their pig noses and rabbit ears to... Uh, to find nests of uh, of termites and ants, uh, they can forage for up to 19 miles in their foraging range. Um, because, like we mentioned in the ant eater episode, ants do not a very filling meal make. Uh, so you need to eat a lot of them, uh, and you uh, need to be you need to be sustainable about it so you can't just bleed an ant colony dry you have to eat a bunch of them and then leave and then come back like a week later 
so that their population has been has come back and then uh, eat more. So, uh, but while they're walking around looking for the good stuff and they get a, a whiff of some of those delicious, delicious ants, um, the aardvark will dig a V-shaped trench in just seconds. So, I mean, this is this is really where the major fact comes in because it can dig at a rate of two feet every 15 seconds. So that maybe not, that maybe doesn't sound like a lot. It's two feet. So what? First of all, have you ever tried to dig a two foot hole? Second of all, 15 seconds, because that means in third a, of all, use your hands. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I had to last year. I, I dug a, uh, a hole, a post hole for my, uh, for my mailbox. And it's supposed to be two feet deep. And I was just astounded how far that was. I was like a dig. I, 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 I had a post hole digger and I was like digging and I was like, okay, that should be good. It's one foot. Oh, wow. Okay. Dig some more. It's one foot, six inches. And it just, it was a lot m more than I thought it was. And it took me a lot longer than 15 seconds to dig that hole. And I had a tool specifically designed for it, <laughs> but it turns out so does the aardvark. Um, but if you think about that rate, that means in a minute, it can have an eight foot hole, Doug. So it can just be gone, totally gone underground in a, in, in a minute, less than a minute. Um, so obviously, I mean, this is ideal for avoiding predators. Um, within just a few minutes, it could completely bury itself and be gone. Um, I could not find it like playing out in action i didn't see any i couldn't find any videos of it like oh look there's a lion i'm gonna go uh bury myself um i guess it, it must only work if the lion hasn't spotted you yet uh because yes a minute is not a long time to dig an eight foot hole but it is a lot longer than it takes for a lion to catch you and kill you so well that's what the early one early warning is for yeah so it's like oh i hear this i hear that there's uh, a predator in the area um there's no way i'm out running it so i'm going to bury myself he so you're saying they dig a tunnel quick before the hyena comes yeah so thanks for just taking all of the wind out of my ending but <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, because they do get eaten. They do get uh, uh, preyed upon by hyenas, um, so they do need to dig a tunnel before the hyena comes. But when it's foraging, it digs this V-shaped trench, and then it smells the walls of this trench to find exactly where the underground nest is. Um, and then once it finds it, it, for lack of a better term, digs in. Um. And like the anteater, aardvarks have this really long sticky tongue that they just lap up ants. And they can eat up to 50,000 ants uh, in one foraging session. They usually don't eat 50,000 ants from one nest, though, because like I said, they don't want to eat all the ants in a nest. They want to make sure that the nest is still there and able to come back uh, so that they have a regular source of food because they have a static burrow. And if they ate, if they depleted the uh, all of the pride lands of all the hunting game, um, then there would be, uh, then the herds will move on, and they won't be able to to live at Pride Rock anymore. Um, but interestingly, a single termite mound doesn't provide enough food, so um, aardvarks will specifically look for termite nests that are on the move, since they multiple mounds worth of termites will get will move together in large columns uh, and so it can just dig the one hole and lap up many 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 delicious guys am i the only one that thought that in the in tarzan when he uses his um his uh human brain to uh use the elephant's trunk to blow all the termites out of the mounds um, that the termites looked pretty delicious. What's more delicious, those or the grub from 
No, the the grubs from Lion King a hundred percent. Um, because those definitely look slimy yet satisfying. I imagine they tasted like Boston Market macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yes. Um, especially the one that Simba eats in particular, because the other ones, the, the crunch, I don't, I don't want the crunch, but the slurp, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I got. That's uh, the aardvark. It is a digging sensation. And it also looks the way it does. So that's, that could have been the other major fact. It looks like that. It looks like a digger? No. An anteater? It, it looks like a... It's... It it, it looks like Mad Libs, oh, but for animal parts. The way it looks is a major fact. Yeah. But you, it's, it's not... It looks the way it does. That ruined my brain for a second. <laughs> uh, it's like it's got platypus walrus syndrome where it's like, okay, we're, we're going to have this animal and we're going to stick some of this other stuff on it from other animals. And That's the fun thing about taxonomy is like every once in a while there's an animal where like God was clearly like, categorize this idiots <laughs> and we can't <laughs> we try but it doesn't make sense we're gonna give you a seal a saber tooth seal with a mustache enjoy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah do you got anything else that's all i got all right, that's the aardvark for you out there in Podcastia. Go out on the hunt. Slurp up some ants. And dig a tunnel, dig, dig a tunnel. Quick before the hyenas come. It's like the aardvark here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> what was that before the hyena comes